This video is a recording of the second webinar of the SGD webinar series, titled Predicting Chemotherapy Targets in Yeast Mine. Please enjoy. All right, hello and welcome everybody to the second SGD webinar of the SGD webinar series. We're all very glad you're here today and are excited to talk to you about SGD's yeast mine and how to run complex queries with it. YeastMine can answer a whole lot of biological questions, as I hope you'll be taking away from this webinar at the end. And to demonstrate this, later in the webinar, we'll also go through a hypothetical research scenario where YeastMine is used to predict potential chemotherapy targets. Anytime throughout the webinar, please do ask us questions through the Q&A button on the right-hand side of the page. We'll be making a brief stop for questions during the webinar and also have a Q&A session at the end. So without further ado, let's get right to it. So what is YeastMine? YeastMine is a vast searchable data warehouse based off of the Intermine system that integrates multiple types of data from different sources. Through the web application at yeastmine.yeastgenome.org, YeastMine users can access and analyze these warehouse data through customizable web queries and user-created lists. Information on phenotypes, gene ontology terms, interactions, chromosomal features, and a whole lot more can be retrieved for a single gene or even thousands at a time, greatly reducing the amount of time needed to locate relevant literature and sort through data. To elaborate on this, let's focus on phenotypes for a second, which is just one of the many data types stored in YeastMine. If you take a gene, like ACT1, you can use YeastMine to retrieve all of the observable phenotypes annotated to ACT1, such as observed changes in relative viability, competitive fitness, and resistance to a chemical of your choice. Or you could do the opposite. Start with a phenotype, like competitive fitness, and find all of the genes that have that phenotype annotated to it. You don't have to limit yourself to one gene either. You can save multiple genes into a list in YeastMine and retrieve data on all of them at once. To do any of this, all you have to do is just run a query in YeastMine. It takes just about a minute and can save you so much time. So really quickly, I'm going to go over how to run a YeastMine query before we get into predicting chemotherapy targets later in the webinar. So let's open up the YeastMine homepage. This is, this is the YeastMine homepage, yeastmine.yeastgenome.org. To run a query, you'll want to enter the templates toolbar here, which contains an organized list of pre-made queries that will suit almost every one of your needs. For instance, Let's say that I was interested in finding all the genes that interact with CDC45. I just open up the Interactions tab and select the query Gene to Interaction. So this query, Gene to Interaction, will retrieve all of the genetic and physical interactions listed by Biogrid of a gene you input. In this example, I'll enter in CDC45 in the box here and click Show Results. So here's the results of our query. On the left side of the table, here, is the gene we inputted into the query, CDC45. And on the right side of the table, here, are the genes with a genetic or physical interaction with CDC45. To save these interactors into a gene list, use the Save as List button over here and select this portion of the table. So you'll see that as I go through the options, different portions of the table are highlighted. Once we find the interactors, give the new list a name and hit Create List. And that's it. That's how you run a query in YeastMine. It's really simple. Uh, to access your newly saved list, all you have to do is just click on the MyMind tab over here. Uh, this will take you to your MyMind account page where any lists or analyses that you've saved or run uh, will be shown and kept. So I encourage everybody to make a MyMind account before running any queries in YeastMind so that you don't lose them when you close your browser. So with that, with that done, that we've just covered, we've just uh, gone over how to run a query in YeastMind. Like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to limit your queries to a single gene. If you have any saved list of genes, like the one we just made, uh, you can run that gene list through a query. And YeastMind will retrieve the info on every gene in the list. So, before we move on, are there any questions? I'm just going to take a, a brief pause here to collect any questions if people have any. 
Okay, so now that we've covered the basics of yeast mine, we can move on to the cool stuff, predicting potential chemotherapy targets in yeast mine. Using yeast human homology data in yeast mine, we're going to identify human genes whose protein product can potentially be targeted for synthetic lethal type chemotherapy. Just to give some background on this, synthetic lethality is a type of genetic interaction where the loss of two or more non-essential genes results in cell death or in viability. Recently, this concept has been used to treat cancer by exploiting the synthetic lethal interaction between the human genes BRCA and PARP. As you can see, the normal cell on the left has both functioning BRCA and PARP, but the tumor cell on the right has mutated BRCA and only PARP is functioning. So for tumors that have mutated BRCA, administering PARP inhibitors initiates a synthetic lethal interaction in the cancer cells, but not the normal cells. This causes the cancer cells to die while the normal cells are spared. So how does all this relate to yeast? Well, as a model organism, yeast biology can sometimes predict human biology. There is a great deal of homology going on between yeast genes and human genes. Synthetic lethal interactions between two yeast genes may very well carry on to their human homologs. So for part two of this webinar, we'll use yeast human homology data in yeast mine to predict synthetic lethal interactions in the human genome that can be exploited for chemotherapy. So in order to do this, all it takes is three simple steps. Let's say that you have a human gene, A, which is commonly mutated to lose function in cancer. Step one, we'll import this gene into yeast mine and find its yeast homologue, yeast gene A. Step two, we'll use yeast mine to find yeast gene A's synthetic lethal interactor, yeast gene B. Step three, we'll find the human homologue of yeast gene B. And you're done, just three steps. According to this diagram, because yeast gene A and yeast gene B have a synthetic lethal interaction, yeast mine predicts that human gene A and human gene B will also have a synthetic lethal uh, interaction. It's easy. So now you may remember from earlier in the webinar that yeast mine can analyze multiple genes at once. That's exactly what we're going to do. In this scenario, I free acquired a list of 173 human tumor suppressors from the Vanderbilt Tumor Suppressor Gene Database that have a loss of function ratio equal to 0.2 or more. So in step one, we're going to import these uh, human tumor suppressors into yeast mine and then find their yeast homologs. So let's start at the yeast mine homepage, again at yeastmine.yeastgenome.org. To import the human tumor suppressors into yeast mine, we'll use the Analyze tool over here. Let's paste the one, all 173 human tumor suppressors into this box. Specify for Homo sapiens, since these are human genes, in the organism menu, and then click on Analyze. So on this page, you can sort through any potential name conflicts and duplicates and give your list a name. I'll name this list, List 1, Human Tumor Suppressors, and then click on Save List. With that done, we've just successfully imported the list of 173 human tumor suppressors into yeast mine. To find their yeast homologs, return to the home page again, open up the Homology tab in the Popular Templates toolbar, over here, and select the query human gene to yeast homologs and omim disease phenotype. This query will retrieve the yeast homolo homologs of any human genes you input, as well as any diseases annotated to your human genes by, the, by omim, or the Online Mendelian Inheritance in Man database. Check the constraint checkbox, and input the list of human tumor suppressors. Once that's done, Hit show results. On the results table, on the left side here, the human tumor suppressors that we inputted are shown. The right side of the table here contains the yeast homologs. As before, click on the Save as List button, locate this part of the table, the yeast homologs part, 
and then give your list a name. I'll name this list List2 Yeast Homologs. And that completes step one. So let's have a quick recap of what we just did. First, we took 173 human tumor suppressors from TS gene and imported them into yeast mine as list number one, our list of human tumor suppressors. Then, we ran this list of human tumor suppressors through a homology query, which gave us list number two, the yeast homologs of the human tumor suppressors. In step two, we're going to run these yeast homologs through an interactions query. This will find us all the genes that have a synthetic lethal interaction with our yeast homologs. So return to the yeast mine homepage, open up the interactions tab in the popular templates toolbar, and select the query gene to interaction. This query will find all of the genetic and physical interactions of the genes you input, just like we saw earlier. Check the constraint checkbox and input the list of yeast homologs, the list we made in the last step. Click Show Results. Now, this results table currently contains all of the genetic and physical interactions of our yeast homologs. To filter for just synthetic lethal interactions, find the Interaction Detection Methods Identifier column which is highlighted here, and use the View Column Summary button at the top. This will produce a little window, which is shown here, that summarizes all the values in the column. Select Synthetic Lethality, and then click on Filter. Now our results table has been refined to only synthetic lethal interactions. Click on the Save as List button, then save the interactors on the right side of the table, and give your list a name. I'll name this list, List3, Synthetic Lethal Interactors. Hit Save. So that completes Step 2. To recap, we just ran our list of yeast homologs through an interactions query and found all of the genes that have a synthetic lethal interaction with our list of yeast homologs. In our third and final step, We'll run this list of synthetic lethal interactors through a homology query. This will give us the human homologs of the yeast synthetic lethal interactors and complete our scenario. So return to the yeast mine homepage, open the homology tab, and click on the query yeast gene to OMIM human homologs and OMIM disease phenotype. This query will find the human homologs of any yeast genes you input, along with the annotated diseases from the OMIM database. As before, check the constraint checkbox and input the list of yeast synthetic lethal interactors. Click Show Results. And one more time, you're going to click on the Save as List button Find the portion of the table that contains the human homologs and give your list a name. I'll name this list List4 Human SL Interactors. So that pretty much concludes our scenario. Before I wrap this up, I'd like to show you a really quick example of just one of the predictions made in this scenario. Here are four genes that for, here, are, here are four genes that come from the lists we made today in YeastMine. On the left side of the table, here, are the yeast genes MEK1 and PAL3. YeastMine showed us that these genes have a synthetic lethal interaction. On the right side of the table, here, are the human genes ATR and PAL1. ATR was just one of the genes in our original list of 173 tumor suppressors and is homologous to Escerevisiae MEK1. POLD1 is homologous to Escerevisiae POL3. So essentially, based off of the synthetic lethal interaction between MEK1 and POL3, YeastMind predicts that human ATR and POL1 will also have a synthetic lethal interaction. And in fact, just this year, 
In early 2016, a paper was published in OncoTarget that characterized a synthetic lethal interaction between ATR and POLD1. Here's what the paper looks like. Dr. Hawk and her colleagues performed a synthetic lethal screen and uncovered a, quote, profound synthetic lethal interaction between ATR and POLD1, which could selectively kill ATR-deficient cancer cells. This has potential uh, clinical implications, they assert, as cancers that lose POLD1 functioning could possibly be treated with ATR inhibitors. That's pretty cool. So why go through any of this? Well, this synthetic lethal interaction has been known for years in yeast, while only recently the same synthetic lethal interaction has been found in humans. The queries we ran today uncovered 847 human genes that have potential synthetic lethal interactions with the original 173 human tumor suppressors we, an we analyzed. So lots of potential research. So with all that said, that concludes our webinar. If you have any questions, please stay for our Q&A session. Otherwise, thank you for coming. And make sure to keep an eye out for our follow-up email for more information on our next webinar, the SGD website, our YouTube channel where today's webinar will be uploaded, and the data set that we used to analyze today. So thanks again for coming, and let's go ahead and start our Q&A session. A question we received during our Q&A session after the webinar is if the yeast mind scripts in Perl are also available. Yes. Simply follow the Perl link at the bottom of the yeast mind homepage for more information. Thank you for watching the SGD webinar series. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us at sgd-helpdesk at lists.stanford.edu.